Um, I want to share a little bit about myself for those of you that don't know me, uh, just to frame how we came up, um, across creating Solutions Day and, and the journey that I've taken to get here. So growing up, I learned that a solid work ethic brings rewards. Starting young, you can see me uh, going block to block, house to house, maybe. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> this is for facts, but it's not working. Um, uh, uh, selling Girl Scout cookies to make sure that I was the top seller. Um, of course, those of you that know me know that I'm a little bit competitive. Um, and by the way, just as an aside, I called my mom asking her for a Girl Scout picture. She spent hours, boxes of photos, couldn't find anything. And five minutes, I posted on Facebook and got a ton of Girl Scout pictures. So we'll talk about that later. <laughs> so in high school and college, um, I led several social service groups, sometimes wondering, is this because of how I was raised or because I watched Oprah every day and I just thought that's what people did. Um, and probably a little bit of both. Um, so what I do know is that I have had a, a strong desire to serve and give back to my community. While many of you know me in my career, think of me as involved in tech, yet um, I double majored in communications and poli-sci with a desire to become an executive director of a nonprofit and no desire to learn technology. But then I was sitting in the communications department and the neurosurgeons, the AAAF in 1994, and I was asked, can you help us develop the website? And I said, yes, because of course I've got a good work ethic, right? And I was like, what the hell is a website? <laughs> um, so besides going to Barnes and Nobles and, and running to David Reed's office, who was in charge of IT, we're like, we're gonna figure this out. Um, then I was recruited to start a for-profit subsidiary at another association that was gonna create websites for other associations. Um, that's a presentation in itself. Um, but I was challenged to constantly consider what was coming next, what the new technologies were gonna be, and how we would survive Y2K. And I had to learn a lot. Like, you have to keep the server room cool, um, so what do you do when electricity <laughs> goes out? So that's kind of what we did, right Tom? <laughs> so after nine years of growing that business, I decided to venture out and start my own. Um, this led me to create .org Source, and now .org Community and other companies under the .org Companies brand. So when I ventured out to start the consulting company, I created a list of what I love to do and what I hate to do. And on the top of my list was, I loved helping people and I loved solving problems. So I get to do what I love to do every day. And you all inspire me and challenge me to keep trying to solve problems um, and keep bringing new solutions to our community. So we're asked a lot of why we created Dot Our Community and Solutions Day. Since serving a cause has always been my desire, and many of you were pushing us to bring better education and networking to the industry, we created Dot Our Community for forward-thinking, problem-solving leaders. Uh, with the support of many of you, we created an organization to serve the community that we're passionate about. So like Atlas, it sometimes may seem like we have the weight of the world on our shoulders. And that's true. Associations, we believe, are the backbone of society, um, and they make the world a better place. So as a community, still we have so much to be proud of. Our work in association executives elevates almost every uh, profession that you can think of. Uh, and some that you probably haven't imagined. Um, we support professions from healthcare to home building, wherever people share an occupation, a vocation, um, this community makes it stronger. So that, uh, Solutions Day is about becoming better, smarter, and more effective at the work that we do. So we also believe that it's more important than ever to have critical conversations about how associations will thrive um, over the next 10 years. As you know, and as a, probably a lot of you are talking about, our industry is at threat. Um, the next 10 years will require associations to quickly change the way that they're operating and serve their constituents in order to remain relevant. Researchers and futurists tell us that organizations that are most at risk are those who have unnecessary layers of bureaucracy and process. 
than those that are not responsive. A lot of you can relate to that here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so this is why five years ago we decided that it was important for us to gather executives to think about how associations need to change, not only how and what they do, but who they are and in order to stay relevant. So we're really excited about the work that we're doing here and today and, and the thought leaders that we brought um, to you guys at, at this at conference. We also feel it's really important and was important to us as Kevin and I examined what was happening in the association community. There was not a lot of opportunities to engage with the supplier partners. And we feel like the supplier partners bring a lot of um, knowledge and different things that they're seeing from other customers, um, different issues. And we really feel that engaging with those uh, supplier partners is very important for our learning as well. So what's happening today? So everyone's like, I'm receiving calls um, from organizations who are concerned with engaging younger members. Um, they're calling me about declining event uh, registration, membership retention, uh, asking us for help with growth strategies. And so do these kind of challenges sound familiar to some of you? So um, I told you about my career journey for a reason. With each opportunity, we predicted the market needs along with expectations of our customers and members to create um, products and services that align with their needs. So today, um, we're trying to do the, the same thing. So look around. Some of you have your laptops. I'm sure all of you have your phones handy. Um, making sure you don't miss that very important message, right? Um, you know, these are your members. Uh, they're on their phones, they're on social media, and it's just not the young people. Uh, we are living through our smartphones, whether we like it or not. So, um, so, you know, the question is, are we designing content and products and services for this? As everybody's living through this phone. Um, we're also looking at things like, you know, what channels are we using? If we're trying to engage uh, anybody under 30 years old, they're not on Facebook, they're not on LinkedIn, they're on Snapchat, they're on Instagram, whether we like it or not. Um, and I don't tell you, I hate Snapchat, but I'm on it because that's <laughs> the only way I can communicate with my college daughter. Um, so that's something that we need to really think about. Are we using Instagram influencers? Are we using Instagram um, ads? But more importantly, association leaders need to realize that everything that's creating your business opportunities today didn't exist 12 years ago. There were no smartphones, there was no Facebook, there was no Instagram, there was no Snapchat. Um, so really thinking about you know, how do we use those, the internet for those opportunities. You should also be moving towards optimizing your website for voice activation, uh, which is exploding right now, along with audio and voice control devices. So we believe if you're not learning the current technologies and watching consumer behavior, that you're not gonna be successful growing your association. So think of technology as a tool uh, to grow your organization. All the challenges we're hearing about all related to a simple word, which is growth. So are we asking the right questions to help our organizations grow or focus on the symptoms rather than the systems that created them? So really what we're looking at, you know, we are living through a massive human culture shift. So this is the biggest culture shift since the printing press. The internet is only 20 years old and just starting. So associations that are ignoring those opportunities are gonna be left behind. So as I mentioned today, we're gonna to hear from leaders talk about innovation, culture, technology, and data. And most importantly, they're gonna share how they are using these elements to rethink their strategies, redesign their operations, and position themselves for success. So at Denver Community, we also studied what makes a successful leader. So along with being strategic, they mitigate risk and they understand the value of people. They commit to creating and sustaining an amazing workplace culture. So whether you're the head of your organization
organization or you play one of them uh, on this team. I hope that you'll have, find some inspiration today and discover a new vision for your work in your organization. So this is your opportunity to reinvent your role and blaze a different trail and create something that didn't exist before. So now I'd like to introduce my partner and co-founder of Dotor Community, Kevin Ordonez. So Kevin and I have, have, have worked together for over 20 years, um, and he also serves as the managing director of technology for .org Source. So please welcome, help me welcome Kevin. <laughs> Been disrupted because I can't find my clicker. <laughs> you practice all night in the morning, and then all of a sudden, someone moves something that you're used to seeing, right? So that's a, almost the simplest definition of, of disruption. Uh, so anyway, thank you for attending and taking some uh, a good chunk of your day to be with us and to network. And one of the things before I get to that slide is. You know, Sherry mentioned about disruption. We're all experiencing that today. And we always are talking about, you hear me and Sherry and others talk about, you know, what you need to do, rethink. And then also, people also mention sometimes, well, we gotta be just like those for-profit companies. You know, let's think like a business. We need to uh, make money. We're just a tax status. But what if we take a look at some of those for-profit companies? So here they are. <laughs> So when you think about, oh yeah, let's be one of those four profit companies, where do you want to be? Where do you want to go? And behind me, everyone here is familiar with these companies. And together, I think they have a, a total addressable market size in the hundreds of millions. And what a shame is that now it's, they're all letting that go. And in the uh, news recently, we have um, uh, Boeing and the Max 8. It's going to be in the news for a long time. But where do you think they're going? And what are they doing about it? And so part of Solutions Day, part of .org community, part of the thought leaders you're going to hear today is all about how do we rethink our strategy, our capability, our culture, our customer expectations. You know, I know you guys are hearing this over and over and over, but I'm sure these companies behind me heard that somewhere down the line too. But today, we can't go into Radio Shack we can't rent a VHS or even you know, a DVD from a store that we all used to love to do. And we can't take selfies now with our Polaroid cameras. <laughs> um, and certainly, you know, buying books these days, what do you do? You go uh, on your phone and buy it. So anyway, I bring this up because I know a lot of talk, when we talk about disruption and innovation and we're, how do we think, uh, you always see flashes of Amazon and Netflix, which are, which are you know, good models. but. I think we all should be reminded about some of the models that maybe didn't work, and some of the thinking in the for-profit area that maybe uh, should have been rethought. So this is your opportunity. You know, Solutions Day is is your sandbox to get to know people, get to know solutions, network, uh, because you don't want me to place your name on a slide in a couple of years about how <laughs> someone disappeared. <laughs> so that should be everyone's goal in this room is. Don't get on Kevin's slides next year. Yeah. Um, so what does that all mean? They just were not relevant, so they disappeared. And I think you guys all know what that means to you. You have to be relevant. You have to create your secret sauce for everyone who wants it more and more and more. And that's really up to you where you want to be. Um, even though we have a, a sold out crowd here, we don't want Solutions Day and .org community to be a secret. Um, all these sessions you're going to be experiencing today, even our past ones, even all the webinars we do, uh, we record them and we put them out on our um, television portal uh, called .org Community TV. And i um, really happy to be partnering with Ian Ryan and WorkerView TV, who's here, Randall's here uh, with us. Uh, great platform for delivering. Because again, like Sherry said, people are doing stuff on their phones, video, voice, you know, they're, they're not uh, searching, they're not pulling up websites, they just go right to, right to YouTube with a video channel. But share this content. Uh, this content today will be available in a couple weeks. We'll send out a note when it is, uh, so you can share that with your staff. So one of the things I want to do, there, there's three things I want everyone in this room to do. Number one, meet 
all of our business solution partners out there, even if you're not looking for an AMS or an LMS or a data analytics platform, talk to them because they're working with customers who are in your shoes and are probably going through some certain experiences and challenges that are probably um, applicable to you guys. So talk to them. They're, they're working with groups every day. So it's a great source of knowledge. So meet with them. There's plenty of opportunities to do that um, throughout the day. And they'll be more than willing to uh, talk to you. The other thing is meet people around you. Make a new connection. At least make one new connection that you know. And then lastly, there's a couple of postcards in front of you. Write down what you're going to do differently tomorrow. Just one thing. It doesn't have to be five things. It doesn't have to be one thing from every presentation. But what are you going to do differently tomorrow? Is it the way you run your team meetings? Is it the way we approach problems? Is it the way we um, handle and talk to our governance and our leadership? Is it the way we want to talk to our members? What is that one thing you want to do differently? Make tomorrow your, your day one. Because uh, if, if you're spending a lot of time and money being here, we want you to go back with something that you can use the next day. So, so, so think about that. Uh, I'll be checking everyone's card before the reception. Uh, so uh, you'll have to come through me before uh, lining up at the bar. Um, the other thing is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, our community and Solution Day is your sandbox. But this is not just a, a one and done. We're always talking about and collaborating now for your future. And so I want to encourage you to uh, meet our other members, our VIP members who've been with us for uh, several years. And also to let you know there are always resources for you to go to. Uh, so most of you know uh, we wrote a little book last year. Um, starting today and through Saturday, you can go on Amazon and download the um, ebook for free. Uh, you just go to Amazon, you can just Google the title or one of our last names, it'll come up. Um, so that'll be free uh, on the Kindle for you guys uh, today through Saturday. Also, we're coming out with um, leadership workshops to help everyone uh, prepare their organization uh, for the future. And we're going to uh, get a taste of a workshop later this afternoon um, with Sharon Rice, who's here to talk to us a little bit this afternoon. And then for those of you who are interested in being a member or are interested in being a VIP member, one of the greatest resources that we offer is what we call our VIP circle. So this is a very tight group. It's limited. Each group is limited to 8 to 10 uh, members. And it's a real great peer sounding board or a board of your peers, where if you're a CEO and you're running into HR challenges, board challenges, growth challenges, very hard to talk about that with your board or your staff or your family. So these groups meet and they discuss these issues. And it's not just we talk about it and everyone goes away and, and doesn't come back. It's we hold people accountable. It's a um, rigorous process. We want people to attend. Um, but it works, and you can talk to other people in the room who have been through this experience, and the process works, and, they, and people get their uh, issues and challenges sorted out. Um, I, know, I know there's a few of our uh, CEO Circle uh, group chairs in the room. Kim Hurley's in the back here uh, with the American Bird Association, and I remember talking to Kim, and she, you know, our group started to go away from the process, and she said, no. The process works, and so stick to it. So uh, that's just a little taste of that group, but a uh, fabulous resource, uh, resource for you guys. Uh, before I, I, we kick it off and um, have the uh, real uh, thought leaders come up here, a uh, big thank you to ASA for uh, hosting us here again. And, uh, and, and Paul and Brian, thank you very much for use of your space. And if you guys want a tour of the facility, uh, beyond the auditorium and the multi-purpose room, Kevin um, will be able to uh, take you on a personal tour. Uh, but as you can see, uh, a fabulous uh, facility. And um, we just love working with these guys. Very easy. Um, and, uh, I can't say anything better than that. But that's, uh, thank you, Bob, very much.